Hello and welcome to this tutorial in Cam Design. In this tutorial, we will be going to the RC bar design, which stands for reinforced concrete bar design. And this is designed for columns and beams. And we will be taking a little bit closer look at the beam design in this tutorial. We will be looking at different settings under reinforced concrete design, and we will be looking at crack width, design group, auto design and manual design. So, if we go into Fem Design, we uh, can see that I am now standing in the RC Design tab and I have selected the bar reinforcement. I still haven't made any calculation, so I am just going to change a few settings. There are a few buttons here. Um, this is the configure calculation. This is only how to calculate with the second order effects and if you are uh, having some special national annex calculation not according to Eurocode the RC shell which is just plates on wall that crack width calculation will be performed but since we are in the bar beam and column then uh, this is just left as default we have a buckling length where we can set buckling length in the first order theory for uh, beams, columns, and we can set it in stick direction and the weak direction. This is not really something uh, that has to be done if a beam is uh, connected to the slab. So I will just use the layer here to hide the RC bar flexure buckling. The next button is the design calculation parameters and if I select that one and I click on a beam we can see that the, there are a few settings here with that the maximum distance between the calculated sections are half a meter. We consider the second order analysis if it is available. It is possible to set an allowed crack width and I think that the default is set to one millimeter so for this instance we can set it to 0 0.3 millimeters and if possible do not use the reinforcement as compressed reinforcement uh, and this means that cross-section will try to take any compressive forces in the concrete and tension reinforcement yeah it is possible to uh, make a check of the uh, beams but that can only be done if we have uh, made a calculation or set a few parameters and we have made some changes in the model then we can just check if they are still okay the next button is a design group and with this button i can set a group name yeah, let's say that they are beam one it is possible to set a color and it is recommended to not use red yellow and green because that's the colors of the utilization by default so i will select blue here and I will just select the beams here and it doesn't really matter what I select here because one group that we see here can only contain elements that are uh, similar cross-section, similar length. Uh, the loading on the beams can be different. So on the top beam here, for instance, we have loading from the roof, but on the first floor here we don't have roofing. so. Um, the program will actually see what is the worst beam and calculate each section for being the worst one. So if there would be one problem, one thing here in the bottom beam that would be decisive, then uh, that would be designed in that section. So I cannot group beams and columns, for instance, in one group. And I only need to reinforce one of the beams now and it will reinforce all the beams in that group. I will now create a calculation. So I start calculate. Uh, one thing before that though. If you want to remove group, you can just use explode and right click on one of the elements in that group and the whole group will be exploded. But I wanted to have one group for the beams here. So back and uh, using the calculate, I will use a design calculation and I will base my analysis on the load combinations, which means that I don't have any load combinations calculated, but the program will actually calculate them for me. 
in order to make the design calculation. Settings here for the calculations, they are auto design, and that means the program will actually define what kind of reinforcement you have, it will just apply it, but we can also make a check so uh, to see if the current reinforcement will be okay. And if we don't have any current reinforcement, it will just say that the utilization is with the roof, so we don't actually put in any reinforcement yet. So I would recommend it to use the check in the first place, and I will use that and press OK. And here we can see that the applied reinforcement is missing from the crack section analysis. This is the setting that I accidentally used, and that is the consider cracking of RC elements. This will only be valid if I actually have reinforcement in my model, but since I don't have it, the program cannot make any proper cracking calculation. So I just unclick that one and make the design calculation. And now we can see that we are making the uh, calculating the reinforcement, and that means that the calculation will be soon complete. First, we get this information that the reinforcement necessary for crack width calculations, but there are no reinforcements even point, which means that we haven't applied any reinforcement, and the program tries to make a crack width calculation. This is a normal message that you get if you don't have any applied reinforcement. And uh, I will just say continue because we are going to add that reinforcement. I now go into auto design and here I have two buttons in the auto design. The first one is parameters so I can actually right click on the beam here and I can set the reinforcement I can set the cover and let's say that I want 20 millimeter cover. I can use set all or I can actually click on one side and say 25 set and set it on the other side as well. It's possible to change the quality and this is based on the Swedish National Amex. So here we can see the Swedish material properties. We have a diameter of the stirrups and so on, and this is just a base for calculation. The manufacturing, here it's possible to set the uh, size of the aggregate and if we want any vibrator space to be able to vibrate concrete. I select OK in this one and I go into the design mode which is the exclamation mark. Here we now see the utilization and I have one group which is the beam 1 and that can be seen flashing in the model. That beam 1 group consists of beam 1 1 which is the lower one and beam 2 1 which is the upper one. I can also see that I have four columns, the C stands for columns. So I have column one, which can be seen here. Column two is on top, column three and column four. So these are the reinforced concrete bars elements that we have in the model. But I will be taking a look at the beams. And if I select beam here, I can press parameters and I get the same option again. I use the design and now the program will actually design beams for me according to these settings. I go in and select a new result. And now I have the result RC bar utilization. And I want to see the maximum utilization. And we can now see that I have the beams here are green. The columns are not yet designed, so they don't have any colors yet. And I can see that the beams have been designed for 100% utilization. And the lower beam has the section utilization of 26%. The stirrup utilization is 100%, so it's most likely the stirrups. 
that would be the problem with this kind of team. We have the concrete utilization, the torsional reinforcement, and crack widths. And the crack widths are only a result for uh, the uh, serviceability limit state. So the program doesn't design the reinforcement, it only checks the reinforcement in the serviceability limit state. If we go in and use the detailed result that will highlight in any utilization result, I will right click on the beam and here we can now see how the program was to apply the reinforcement. You can see the stirrups on top and the longitudinal bars in the bottom here. We also have the results according to Eurocode and it's a reference to each Eurocode chapter here as well. And here it's possible to check the stirrup utilization for instance and we can see that the stirrup utilization is quite high here in the middle where it can be expected and also in the ends. We have the torsional reinforcement and crack width calculations being carried out. We have different utilizations depending on the crack widths as well. And we have here a summary of beam where we can see the start point and end point and this is along the beam. But if we are not pleased with this reinforcement it is actually possible to manually design it and uh, let's say that uh, a few reinforcement bars that we don't think will be necessary. So I go into the pen which is the manual design and here I get a view of the beam. Let's say that I want to keep the stirrups because they were utilized to 100% so those are good but uh, the other reinforcement is maybe not good enough so I will just use a race and I will make a box and that will actually remove the uh, uh, bars from this view here. I will select, yeah, we can remove that. Let's say I want to add some stirrups here as well. Uh, I will go into diameter 10. Uh, with a spacing of let's say 200, it's not needed that much. Uh, it's possible to set the uh, cover. Next step is to uh, define geometry of the stirrup, and I will use the uh, rectangular to just snap to the uh, cross section in order to make the stirrup, and then I will say that it will start in this section and it will continue over to this section. Now I have the stirrup input. Next step is the longitudinal bars and uh, let's say that I want diameter 20 and here I have the possibility to define single bar or a group of bars. I will use a single bar to start with and uh, we can see that the bar is actually some kind of magnetic so it sticks to the uh, reinforcement and then I have from the start to the end of the beam at the top and the next bar from the start to the end. In the bottom, I maybe want to have some diameter 25, for instance, but I want to add them as a group of bars. In this case, I can use the uh, number of columns. Let's say that I use three, and the number of rows is two, and this is the spacing between them. Let's see. 40 millimeters. Then I can put out the first one. I go uh, along here and see that it uh, attaches. 
and then I can select which side I want the reinforcement bars to be in. And then I have to define start point and end point of the reinforcement. When I feel I am done, it is possible to actually see this in three dimensions as well. And I will say that this is the reinforcement I want. I can select OK. If I don't want to use this reinforcement, I can use cancel and then it will just be restored to the previous setting. I will use OK here and the program now checks that yeah, this is a valid reinforcement bar. The reinforcement bar doesn't clash with each other or with the stirrups. And now I have a new calculation with a new reinforcement setting. Just see that there isn't any problems with the utilization in the VM. And now it's still the stirrups that are the problem. So the section of concrete as well, no problem on the pack width. It's very low here as well. In order to return to the model, I use the tab in the bottom left corner, which has model, and I am back here again. And uh, can continue with the columns. This concludes this tutorial.